And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs. A time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years, a story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. The universe, the universe of, of you hey wav hey. hey. Brought, Brought to you by, by the nation, nation of you hey wav hey. hey. Working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the day of judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse, and it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end the Messiah would be revealed, and at that time he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh in order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws and statutes of God yud heh wav -Heh, then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. 
We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yisrael. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. Many people believe that the first commandments were given to Moses. But the fact is, the first two commandments ever given to man were given to Adam, which were to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. We are now discussing the second commandment, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. Last week, we continued our discussion of the word keep. In Hebrew, the word keep is shamar, and another one of its meanings is wait. We documented that the word wait means to be in a state of expectation or readiness for. The word expectation was defined as the probability of a future event, and the root word of probability, probable, was described as something likely to happen or prove true. Yahweh put Adam in the Garden of Eden and commanded him not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and warned Adam that if he did, he would surely die. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. We read Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and learned that the most subtle beast of the field, the serpent, told the woman that she would not die if she ate of the tree which was in the midst of the garden. We learned that the woman listened to him and took of the fruit of the tree, ate it, and then gave unto Adam, and he did eat also. The character of the serpent was described. Serpent, we found out, is synonymous to devil. We explained that serpent, as used in this scripture, is not a snake that crawls on the ground, but rather a person who misleads, deceives, entraps, and tricks another, thus a wicked and cruel person. We read Genesis chapter 5, verse 5, and showed you that Adam lived to be 930 years old, which means that Adam did not die physically at the time he ate from the forbidden tree. Genesis chapter 3, verse 23, verified that Yahweh sent Adam forth from the Garden of Eden, which means from the presence of Yahweh. We asserted that to be sent forth from the presence of Yahweh means that Adam suffered a spiritual death. Our pivotal point of discussion was the word wait and its relationship to keep. We concluded that the word wait means that Yahweh commanded Adam to have his mind in a state of expectation or readiness for the likelihood of a future event to take place or for the likelihood of a future event to prove true. Today, we shall continue to discuss how Adam was to keep the Garden of Eden from the perspective of wait. Question. Since Yahweh sent Adam forth from the Garden of Eden, how was Adam to keep the Garden of Eden? Or, in other words, how was Adam to have his mind in a state of expectation or readiness for the likelihood of a future event to take place or for the likelihood of a future event to prove true? Before we answer how Adam was to keep the Garden of Eden, let us first show you what Yahweh did to ensure that Adam remained outside of the Garden of Eden. Please open your Bible to Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, and it reads in part, 
And unto Adam he, Yahweh, said, Because thou, Adam, hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy, Adam's, sake. Adam was put out of the Garden of Eden because Adam hearkened unto the voice of his wife, which means Adam disobeyed the voice of Yahweh. Because Adam disobeyed Yahweh, Yahweh cursed the ground for Adam's sake. Cursed is the ground for Adam's sake? What does this mean? Referenced in the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale, Copyright 1978, on page 251, cursed is equivalent to desolate. Stated in the American Heritage Student Dictionary, copyright 1998, on page 279, desolate means having few or no inhabitants, having little or no vegetation, barren. Is is a present tense verb of be which means to exist. Ground is synonymous to land. At this point, we see that Yahweh directed, ordered, and requested Adam to go out from the Garden of Eden because of Adam's disobedience. To make sure that Adam remained outside of the Garden, Yahweh cursed the ground, which means that Yahweh caused the land to have few or no inhabitants, to have little or no vegetation, or to be barren until this very day. Let's go on. Documented in the American Heritage Dictionary of Idioms, copyright 1997, on page 222, for one's sake means out of consideration or regard for a person. Stated in the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale on page 1065, sake means the same as welfare. On page 1159 of the American Heritage Student Dictionary, welfare is described as health, happiness, and good fortune. Putting all of these facts together, we can assert that out of consideration or regard for Adam, Yahweh cursed the land to ensure its preservation. And even more, Yahweh caused the land to have few or no inhabitants. In addition, he caused the land to have little or no vegetation and to also be barren until this very day. Yahweh did this so the land would be a place of health, happiness, and good fortune for the future benefit of Adam's descendants. Remember, Adam died outside the Garden of Eden at the age of 930. Nevertheless, Yahweh appeared unto a descendant of Adam and made him a promise according to Genesis Chapter 12, verse 7, and it reads in part, And Yahweh appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Although Adam was sent forth from the Garden of Eden, the restoration and the return of Adam's descendants, the children of Israel, to the Garden of Eden are the future events that are to take place or to prove true. Thus, the means by which Adam would be able to keep the Garden of Eden. On the authority of the Barlet's Rosé's Thesaurus, copyright 1996, on page 985, reference number 360, and on page 353, reference number 360.8, the Garden of Eden means the same as the promised land. The restoration and return of Israel to the promised land can only take place at the coming of the Messiah, 
Yahweh ben Yahweh, which is why the question was asked in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, which reads, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Yahweh, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? In summary, to wait or to keep the Garden of Eden means that Yahweh commanded Adam to keep his mind in a state of expectation or readiness for the likelihood of the future restoration of his, Adam's descendants, Israel, to take place and for the likelihood of the future return of his, Adam's seed, Israel, to the Garden of Eden, the promised land to prove true. Next week, we will continue our discussion of the second direct commandment that Yahweh gave to man, Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear, I bear witness, witness to you today that the one all religions have been speaking of for over 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. Most people are not aware of the fact that America is in the Bible. She is cryptically called Babylon, Revelation 18.2. In 1986, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, sent the president, vice president, his cabinet, every senator, and congressman, the book Yahweh Judges America, which warned them of the inevitable destruction of America. This book explains all that the prophets said would come upon America in the day of judgment. You can now read what Yahweh ben Yahweh told the government over 10 years ago. To get a copy of Yahweh Judges America, call the number on your screen today. What does eternal life mean? Eternal life means life without end. It means forever. Not only during the time of one's natural life, but through endless ages of eternal life and blessedness. To find out more, read The Messiah Revealed by Yahweh Ben Yahweh. To order, call us at 1-800-967-7337 or check out our new website and online bookstore at www.yahwehbenyahweh.com. What is the Tetragrammaton? What are the laws and teachings of Yahweh ben Yahweh? What is the meaning of the crucifixion? What are the laws of the covenant? How can you work to balance justice? How can you hear the voice of Yahweh? Learn the answers to these questions and many more on the internet when you visit the new Yahweh Ben Yahweh website. The address is www.yahwehbenyahweh.com. Who is 
is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life, politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. And Yahweh said, Behold, the days come that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. The Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, shall bring peace and prosperity upon the earth. He shall bind his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. Furthermore, he shall wash his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Genesis chapter 49, verses 11 and 12. This is clear divine proof that the lost sheep of the house of Israel and our children, described as asses, colt, and foal, shall be bound to the best of prosperity that the earth has to offer. Of course, the lost sheep of the house of Israel is continuing to suffer affliction and poverty. But Yahweh ben Yahweh has come to take us away to a land like our own land, a land of corn and wine a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive oil and of honey, that we may live and not die. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 32. Our peace is assured and our prosperity is secure. For the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead us, and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of an asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all the holy government of Yahweh. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6 through 9. All of the animals and creatures in this passage are symbols for the many nations of earth who will undergo a character change through the knowledge of Yahweh. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall 
rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> that just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. We, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, shall have endless peace, and our prosperity shall be secure. For Almighty Yahweh has raised unto David a righteous branch, the King of Israel, the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh. And Yahweh ben Yahweh has come to take us away from this land of affliction and poverty to a land of our own. In that land which flows with milk and honey, we, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and our children shall live in peace and harmony forever. We thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabashamayim, Yikardesh Shemeaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yase Razonka, Kivashamayim Kane Baaretz, Et Lekum Kukainu, Tain La Nuhayom, Uslak La Nu, Al Karti Enu, Kimosha Sol King, Gamanak Nu, La Koteum La Nu, Veal Tefi Enu, Lade Nisayom, Kim Kal Se Nu, Min Hara, Kilaka, Hamamlaha, Veha Givara, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and his Son Yahweh bin Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, Call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on the crucifixion of the Messiah. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.